And joining me now from Maryville, Tennessee, is Senator Lamar Alexander. He's chair of the Senate Health and Education Committee, where Dr. Fauci will be testifying on Tuesday. Senator Alexander, welcome back to Meet the Press, sir. Thank you, Chuck. Good morning. Good morning. You've been a big proponent of this initiative over at NIH, which you've compared to the show Shark Tank, essentially to develop a rapid screening test that can be a game changer that will allow us to do rapid testing uh, and quarantining of folks, be able to really ramp up a testing and, and contact tracing program. Dr. Burks on this program has said our solution to testing has to be a breakthrough. I, you are hoping for a technological breakthrough. Dr. Burks is hoping for a technological breakthrough. So are the rest of us. What do we do in between? What do we do right now? Well, we, here's what Tennessee is doing and the country is doing. We have, you know, Senator Schumer was nice enough to quote half of what I said uh, at our hearing last week on testing. I said what we're doing is impressive. He left that out, but not nearly enough. For example, in Tennessee, what we're doing right now is the governor is testing every prison, every nursing home, drive-by testing on the weekends if you want it, free test at the local public health department if you want it, uh, especially testing minority and vulnerable areas where vulnerable people live. His motto is, if in doubt, get a test. And so as a result, Tennessee uh, has tested more than most states. So at about 3.6% of the population, he hopes to be at seven by the end of May. That is, that. look, that is what every state needs. And I guess the question I have is, are, are, are you concerned that we have not ramped up testing and contact tracing in this eight-week period as high as we needed to in order to reopen? Well, what we've done is very impressive. I mean, according to Johns Hopkins, the United States has tested more than 8 million people. That's twice as many as any country, more, more per capita than almost all countries, including South Korea. It's enough to do what we need to do today to reopen, but it's not enough, for example, when 35,000 kids and faculty show up on the University of Tennessee campus in, in August. That's why we need what Dr. Burks called, what Francis Collins is working on, a breakthrough. Mm -hmm. For example, you might be able to put a lollipop in your mouth with a swab, take a picture of it with your, with your cell phone. If it lights up, right. you're positive. Or you send that swab to a laboratory that's not too far away, and they use what they call gene sequencing machines, which are already there. They can do tens of thousands of tests very quickly. That'll lower the risk that uh, there'll be COVID-19 on the campus, and you'll be safe enough to come back and bring your tuition money and your dorm ramp. I, I want to turn now to a rescue program uh, that, that you guys now have to design, another rescue program. I, when you designed the first rescue program, there was a running assumption that it was a, you know, 8, 10, 12 weeks that you were trying to figure out how to essentially allow the economy to, to hang in purgatory. Now that we're facing the steep unemployment numbers that we're staring at, it looks like the program you designed, while maybe hopeful for a short period, is not nearly enough for a long period. Where, where do you see Congress going next? Well, the, the, there's not enough money to help everybody hurt when you shut down the government. So the only solution is test, trace, isolate, treatments, and vaccines. So the fast track on testing is the only solution to this. So we have to reopen the economy. We have to do it carefully. We have to let people go back to work and earn a living. And I don't see us being able to appropriate much more money to, to help provide a counter to that. What do you do? Let me ask you this philosophically about businesses. You can't, you can open an economy, but you can't force the return of demand. So whether you're an airline or you're a restaurant, we know demand is going to be down. And at the same time, their demand is down through no fault of their own. How do you rescue those businesses? And how do you rescue those employees? Number one, vaccine. And the administration has a, an amazingly ambitious goal of 100 million vaccines by September and 300 by December. I have no idea if we can reach that. Number two is treatments. But between now and then, testing. I mean, if you take a test and you know that you don't have COVID-19 and you know that everybody around you took a test that same day, you're going to have enough confidence to go back to work and back to school. So... 
Are you concerned then? You, you have made it clear, because in every one of my economic answers, you have given uh, a testing, uh, a, a part of your answer has included the need for testing and tracing, and you're not alone in this. Are you concerned that the White House doesn't see the testing issue as, uh, as important as you and others do? I've talked with almost everybody on the, on, on the task force. I've talked with the White House Chief of Staff, Mark Meadows, who helped negotiate the what we call the shark tank, where you throw all these early concept ideas in with Francis Collins, who heads the National Institutes of Health. I think we're all pushing for as many tests as fast as we can get them. So track one is to accelerate the technologies we already have. But if you want the lollipop that will give you an instant test, you're going to need a new technology, and that's what Dr. Collins' Shark Tank is all about. Final question. Um, are you disappointed that the president uh, decided to go ahead with the Obamacare lawsuit? There was a, a window where he could have pulled, the Justice Department could have pulled, pulled out of it. They didn't. He wanted to continue forward. If you undo Obamacare, what's the plan to replace it? Well, <clears throat> the answer to your question is yes. I thought the Justice Department argument was really flimsy. I mean, what they're arguing is that when we voted to get rid of the individual mandate, we voted to get rid of Obamacare. I don't know one single senator that thought that. Senator Omar Alexander, I'm going to have to leave it there. Thanks for, but actually, before I let you go, you do have a mask that will, for longtime Alexander watchers, will be kind of fitting. Show it to us. There it is. <laughs> and I wear it. I was just going to say there should be no other mask any member of the Alexander family should be wearing as well. Senator Alexander, thanks for coming on and sharing your views, sir, and we'll look forward to seeing your committee hearing with Dr. Fauci on Tuesday. Hello from Washington. I'm Chuck Todd, and thanks for checking out the Meet the Press channel on YouTube. Click on the button down here to subscribe and click over here to watch the latest interviews, highlights, and other digital exclusives.